Well, I did my best to be nice all through 2020. Uh, I wrote my letter to Santa Claus. It was very clear. I didn't put a whole lot of things on there. I said, all I want for Christmas is the destruction of big tech. And I didn't get it. And I'm never going to forgive him for it. Never. However, uh, if Santa Claus can't do the job, then somebody else might. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott. This is your right angle about a new internet that's on its way. And I suppose the worst thing in the world, uh, gents, uh, would be to uh, raise a child that you absolutely just hate and despise and 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 and, and <laughs> just wish you'd never done it. Well, that's the case for uh, computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee, who um, didn't invent the internet, but he did invent the World Wide Web. So essentially, he invented the commercialization of the web, which means he basically invented the internet that we know anyway. Um, he uh, looks at the internet today and uh, he hates it. He, he just genuinely despises it. Uh, the intent is world domination, he says, about the internet as it exists today, because the internet as it exists today, unlike the thing that he built, is controlled by corporations like Facebook and Google and Amazon and all the rest. Now, here in uh, America, where uh, conservatives are convinced that uh, big tech was an enormous part of what happened in, in uh November of 2020, and the uh, deplatforming of conservative websites and conservative Facebook pages is not only continuing, but it's accelerating. Uh, right now in the news, as we talked about on a different show, uh, the um, social media app Parler was essentially destroyed by, by a combined effort of, of tech giants. And the guy who designed the World Wide Web thinks this is disgusting. So he's doing something about it. He's basically building a new kind of an internet, uh, and he's this time uh, building it into um, a form that he's a little more comfortable with. Scott, for the sake of the argument, since you're a biblical uh, scholar of, of some note, um, <laughs> l- let's just call Internet V1 Lilith, and let's call Internet V2 Eve. And uh, the uh, the entire difference between these two is that is that the Internet that he's building now is one where you control your own information. Right now, your information goes online and to interact on the internet, to have any function on the internet, you you do have to interact. You have to send data and you receive data. So no way around that. But what he's building here with his uh, platform called uh, Solid, his company's Interrupt, and he's building it on a platform called Solid. And basically the fundamental change between this and the existing internet is, instead of your data going up to Google owning it or Apple or Facebook or whatever, He's designing it so that your personal data and all your transactions go up to what he's calling a pod, the solid pod, and all your data is inside that pod. And anytime anybody else wants access to your data, you've got to give them access by name per per um, interaction because you control your own data and not somebody else. Is this an idea whose time has come? I think that this is like the way it was meant to be. I mean, this it is was. the this is the Eden of the internet. Now, of course, we'll screw this up too, so don't uh, kid yourself. <laughs> but um, you know, every Eden must be destroyed by the sinful nature of mankind. <laughs> but you know, it's kind of like we have such different views of the internet. I was just thinking as you were talking, I was like, you know, the internet is like a a reservoir, which is you know uh, many acres of water, and the average person like me says, "Ooh, a reservoir." I'd like to water ski on that. But there's somebody else looking at that reservoir going, I'd like to drain every last drop of that and take all the fish. And you know, like, like they have a whole different Charge you for the water. Like, yeah, and they, they just, they kind of like, oh, I'm gonna power my, nucle- my, uh, my business by pumping all the water out of the lake. So, you know, pe- some people look at a market opportunity and they think in terms of domination rather than in terms of, wow, how can we, help people with this in a way that helps us and sustain the resource for the long run. Uh, But if you go in there with the idea that you're going to destroy the resource in order to take a short-term profit, then ultimately somebody like Tim Berners-Lee is gonna come along and say, you know what? That's not why I made this. I'm making something else. And I, I gotta say, hat tip to this guy, because if I were him at the age of 65, I'd be off the grid, living somewhere, you know, trout fishing on a creek and making sure that nobody could ever find me Um, because I'd be so angry at what they had done to my beautiful child. But he didn't give up. 
And that's just really a cool attitude. It's a very American kind of way of thinking. I don't even know if the guy's American, but it's He's a very British. American way of it's thinking. It's the next to best say, thing. Yeah. To be able to look at something and go, you know what? I uh, 1.0 was great. And then they corrupted it. I'm going to make 2.0. And I think that kind of spirit is what's going to uh, save us in a very terrestrial sort of way. It's going to really be able to help us to move forward because I don't know who listens to what you just said and doesn't go, yeah, that's for me. Where do I sign up? Uh, Steve Scott's analogy of a reservoir frightens and confuses me. My understanding is that the internet is a series of <laughs> a series tubes. Series of tubes. <laughs> um, but in any event, that lead um, to the reservoir. That's that's exactly yes. right. Uh, I I I had the thought very similar to Scott's not too long ago. It's like why couldn't Facebook have just stayed Facebook? Why couldn't they have just been a way to connect people with their friends and 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 families? Uh, why couldn't Google have just been Google? Why couldn't they have been the premier source? A search engine on the planet, put ads on their homepage and basically had people find what they wanted on the internet. It's power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Um, but the thing that, that um, this this guy has, Steve, is not just the, the technical know-how and he doesn't just have the, the uh, financial backing. He's got the moral credibility be, to be the person to basically create an entirely new internet structure. Uh, and you got to like his attitude. Uh, this is a direct quote about his um, his plans to, to basically su supplant the existing internet with something that's much, much more secure and much more resistant to tyranny. Uh, and this is what he said. He said, we're not talking to Facebook and Google about whether or not to introduce a complete change where all their business models are completely up ended overnight, he declared, we're not asking their permission. That's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Bill, uh, before I answer your question, I want to uh, uh, tell you that I did get my Christmas wish. I just haven't seen it yet. I wished for a pony and uh, I haven't actually seen the pony yet, but based on all the manure that's been stacking up across the country for the last month or so, I assume it's there's a pony in there it's somewhere. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking. So we we'll, got more uh, ponies than you can count coming we'll, your way, pal. Uh, wish, wish me luck. Maybe send me a bigger shovel. Uh, wow. You know what the problem is? We've got a great irony here. Uh, when Tim Murders Lee invented the World Wide Web, it was meant to be open, and open was great good. You could go anywhere. You could see anything. Anybody could do any of this because it was point and click simple. It was just, just absolutely genius. Uh, the problem is that, as it turns out, open incentivizes evil. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, AOL had everything that Facebook has today except for the imagination to be evil. They had a... They had a, a essentially a walled garden of the internet where they could, had they chosen to, uh, tracked every click, kept records of every conversation, whether it was in a, a public chat room or a private message. They had all of this. And in, 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 instead of data mining the way Facebook did, they just showed some banner ads and took your 12 bucks a month or whatever it was. Um, I'm not saying Steve Case was a better person than Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, maybe he just lacked the, uh, the evil imagination to exploit his users the way that Mark Zuckerberg has done over at Facebook. But openness has made it possible. And again, this is this is a great example of the law of unintended consequences. What openness has allowed is this data mining, this data harvesting that turns you into the product. And, you know, we joke about this a lot or even warn people about this a lot, that if you're getting a service for free on the Internet, you're the product. But think about that. Think about the morality of being somebody else's product. You're a human being that's been reduced to an inanimate object. You're a widget. You are somebody else's thing to exploit um, and, and to use. That is pure evil, and it is built on the goodwill that was the openness of Internet 1.0. Internet 2.0 can't get here fast enough. Let me just say for the record that I don't know a single thing about Steve Case. I assume he was uh, the president of AOL. I know nothing about yes. him. But the one thing I can tell you is that he's a better person than Mark Zuckerberg. That's one <laughs> thing I can absolutely state with confidence. 
Um, there is a, a, a form of technology uh, called blockchain, and it, it basically is an, an, an unbreakable code. It's not a difficult to break code. It's, it's unbreakable. And blockchain has been talked about for quite a long time. And to give you just a very, very quick example of the power of blockchain, if, if YouTube, where you're watching this now almost certainly, if YouTube was operated um, using blockchain, then Google could not censor our videos because Google couldn't see our videos. YouTube couldn't see our videos. They would not be able to view them. The only people who can view them would be the people we issued the key to. This technology has been here for quite a while and is becoming mature, but basically, I had said to myself, the one thing that I would take from a second term of a Trump administration, I'd give up the wall, I'd give up everything. I'd give up a couple of aircraft carrier battle groups for this in order to break up big tech. Well, Joe Biden's administration is not going to break up big tech. That that big tech did an awful lot of downfield blocking for, for the Biden administration. He's not going to break them up. But it is a relief to know that there are forces even more powerful than, than a combination of, of cartels, politics, and all the rest. And that is the occasional um, uh, emergence of a person who's got the intelligence, the morality, and the backing to create a, pro a product and, and somebody who is incorruptible to the degree that he could be bought off clearly by, by, by people who could write the biggest checks on the planet. You know, think about that for one second when you think about Mr. Berners-Lee, the largest checks on the planet, the largest bribes imaginable in human history could and I'm sure have been offered to him. And he said, no, we're going to basically do it again. When this happens, all of the people who feel like they've been cheated and, and corrupted and, 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 and taken advantage of are going to flock to this, to this internet version 2.0. And then, uh, Zuckerberg and Google and, 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 and what's his name? Malibu. Bin Laden on Twitter and all the rest of them uh, are 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 going to be left out in the cold, and they're going to have no one to blame but themselves. And then, when information is actually freely available, then we might actually have a chance to start seeing some justice uh, return to this world, uh, which has been locked out of our society by the uh, chains that we fettered for ourselves when we decided to allow people we'd never met. Uh, invite us onto their private property and then set up our residences there, not knowing a single thing about them and not knowing when they decide to throw us into chains because we walked in their door and we paid them to be there. For Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks for joining us. Thanks especially for the large numbers of new members we've gotten recently. And for all of you who made a, a one-time donation, uh, I'd love to thank every single one of you personally. We deeply appreciate it and, and we're going to need the resources in the days to come. We'll see you next week right here on Right Angle.